Welcome to Hologram. I'm Mikey with Customer Success. And I'm Chris Gamble of Developer Relations. And today we're going to be going over connecting third-party hardware on Hologram's network. And that's because we see a lot of it, actually. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there, and we kind of cover a lot of it, don't we? Exactly. Hologram's network is um, device agnostic, so you can bring whatever device you want, uh, put a SIM in there, and you should be able to use a hologram network pretty much wherever you go um, in the 180 uh, countries that we serve. That's awesome. Okay. So uh, where can I find out more about this? <laughs> yeah. So um, I actually wrote a blog post um, that should be on our web now while you're watching this video. It's linked below. Um, it goes over the main steps of connecting third-party hardware. Mm -hmm. um, so we see a lot of um, devices that have issues people aren't able to connect. And it usually boils down to the same um, issues that people have. Really, it's a pretty straightforward process once you know what to do. And that isn't really documented super well um, in other places. So we thought we'd uh, give it a shot to help you guys um, onboard quicker. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. OK, so what are some of the steps to, to get started? Yep, so we've broken it down into four steps. Um, and the very first step is making sure that your hardware is compatible. Um, so you would think that um, in 2017, you buy pretty much any piece of hardware and it works globally. It's 2018. 2018. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's way worse than you even thought. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting old. <laughs> um, but yeah, you would think that in 2018, uh, you can just grab any uh, off-the-shelf piece of hardware and it would connect globally. But that is not true. Right. Um, especially with cellular, different countries have different bands. Right. Um, and depending on the band you're using, right. um, you may be able to use it in certain countries and not in other countries. And I think um, you're, you're working on something about that, right? That's right. Yeah, there's different bands, but also there's different technologies, right? There's 2G, 4G. LTE, like all this stuff that's kind of come through the pipeline, we cover a lot of the old stuff too. Right? It's not it's not that we only cover one of them. We actually cover all of them. So not only do you need to know that your your hardware is global, we also need to know that you have coverage where you are, and then also that yeah, like all of these things. So mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, coverage maps and stuff like that. That's a good place to start. But also the main thing is just making sure that your hardware works in your country. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. So that's that's obviously step one, knowing that the device you have is either global or works in the country you're in with the technology that you have. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, um, the next step is to make sure that your device can roam. So because our, uh, our network covers 600 carriers, roaming is very important. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you have roaming established, or, or that you can set roaming, the next important part um, is setting the APN. Um, and the APN, for those of you do, who do not know, it's, it's like the DNS um, equivalent for cellular. So it's kind of like the gates to the internet. And you yeah. just like knock on the door and they're like, what's the password? Password's the, hologram. Password's hologram, right? right? So the APN's the password. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about that a little bit later in step two, I believe. Um, but again, uh, this first step is just making sure that your device um, works wherever you are. Yep. Um, is able to roam and set the APN, and also that isn't locked to a, a carrier. So okay. with a lot of the devices that you buy direct from a carrier, they're usually subsidized. And to do that, um, the, the carrier locks it down to their network. So um, you need to use it for a certain amount of time before they can unlock it for you, right. if they unlock it for you. Um, so that's another important thing to make sure that uh, you're using an unlocked piece of hardware uh, before, you, you, before you start. Right, OK. And how do they know if it's locked or not? Is it just based on if it's? Uh you know, if they've bought it and it says it's tied to that network or what? Yeah, usually if you buy a piece of hardware that's locked, it's directly from a carrier okay. and uh, they'll tell you. And again, if you ask, they'll, they, they'll tell you as well. Right. Um, but there are no other signs of, that a piece of hardware is tied down to a network. We see a lot of devices that have the branding for that carrier, but they bought them somewhere else. So that means they're unlocked. So just, just make sure that you know where you're getting your device from and that you check for that. It seems a lot less common than it was in the 90s of like where carriers bundled plans and Exactly. Devices, so that's mm -hmm. hopefully less of a problem, but exactly. you never know. Yep, so definitely something to check. Yep. Um, that pretty much covers uh, the, the first step, step zero. Okay. Um, so again, going over that, make sure that you can use it wherever you are. Uh, make sure that it's unlocked and make sure that you can set the APN and then you can roam. Okay. Um, so once you've done that, we go to activation. So um, a lot of people enter their SIM cards, uh, try to use the network, and like, hey, it's not working. Why isn't this working? Um, and we check the device and it hasn't been activated. So that's step one. Okay. Step one is go to hologram, go to your dashboard, which we have um, on the screen right now, and click on the activate button in the top right and activate your device. Right. Um, and then how will I know that my device is active? Right. Well, uh, take a look at it, right? And the dashboard, mm -hmm. that's what the dashboard's really good at is kind of giving you information about whether a particular SIM, and when you mm -hmm. say device, you mean SIM, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's green dots, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So in the, in the dashboard, um, they're listed as devices, but these are your SIMs. And a green dot means that it's been um, activated and it's live right now. 
a yellow dot means that it's in the process of becoming active, and a red dot means it's been paused. Right. So only devices with the green dots are able to connect uh, to the hologram network. Right, and you can see on the, the dashboard we have here, I, we had made a video in the past. Uh, I paused that data on that cradle point uh, video, and now it's red. So yeah, mm -hmm. that one is not, if I try to use it, it something bad would happen, right? Exactly, yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to uh, connect to data or SMS. Right, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, and we, oh, we also have a video about how to activate a SIM, so go and check that out. There's a whole process, of, not a whole process, but it's actually pretty easy, yeah. but, but uh, you know, it's, you have to activate, go through and actually activate the SIM and choose your plan and stuff like that. Exactly, yeah, you just enter the SIM number, choose your plan, and that's pretty much it, but you have to do it in order to access the network. Right, okay, great. Perfect. Um, so then, the next step, once you've activated it, uh, once you've activated your SIM, is actually entering the, or putting the SIM into the device, mm. which is a lot harder than most people think because a lot of devices, I think, are poorly designed and don't really tell you how to do it. Right. Um, I guess there's four different ways to put in a SIM based on the notch it has. Right. Um, and you can see right now on the screen, um, we have a SIM here, and our SIM comes in the four sizes, so the full card being the standard size, then we have the mini, um, inside the mini is the micro, and inside the micro is the nano. Right, right. Um, so definitely make sure that you're using the right SIM size. And what I like to do is go from biggest to smallest. Um, mm -hmm. Usually starting with the mini. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you start with the mini. So right. the standard full card size uh, is the only one that doesn't have a notch. And it was the very first SIM card that was designed. But nowadays, it's super rare to see. I don't right. think I've ever seen a device right. that uses An the full SIM Old flip phone card. style. Like, uh -huh. yeah, I don't exactly. think they're doing that much anymore. Yeah, like back, back in Bolivia, there were like phone booths that use the full uh -huh, SIM right, card. Right. But I haven't seen that since I was a kid. So Got it. Um, definitely going from the mini down uh, to the nano. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then what about the orientation, too? So like, uh, it, it has to be electrical contact, I think mm -hmm. you said. But like, uh, how, do you, how can you tell which way it should go in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the sims, uh, the three smaller sim sizes have a notch in the top, so you can see here there's this little uh, notch. And usually there's gonna be a diagram that shows you where the notch has to go, uh -huh. but there's uh, some more subtle ways that uh, manufacturers tell you how to uh, put in your sim. Uh, one of those ways is through a little notch in the sim tray. So here we have a phone, and when you plop out the tray, there's a little side that has a notch. That's how you know that where you're supposed to put it. Right, so probably wouldn't even fit otherwise, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, other ways is to be able to tell is just um, in the plastic. So here we have a modem. I don't know if you can see this too well, but um, the plastic kind of has a notch, mm -hmm. but also the electrical contacts, mm -hmm. right? So you want to make sure that the, the little uh, golden part on the sim mm -hmm. is touching the electrical contacts. So if, you're, if you don't have any sort of uh, imprint or any sort of clue as to how you're supposed to put your sim in, you know that metal has to be contact with metal, so that uh, reduces the options to two. Right. Um, and a good way to test this out um, is if you have access to the AT commands, mm -hmm. um, doing AT plus CCID, right. um, and that'll return the SIM number. Right, so right? that's actually the modem pulling the SIM, the number off the SIM and then displaying it on a serial console or screen mm -hmm. or whatever. Exactly, so yeah. if you have an error there that you know that your SIM um, is inserted improperly, um, usually there's also an, uh, an LED indicator that'll tell you like, oh, there's a SIM connection or no SIM connection. Got it. Um, so that's, those are a couple of good ways to debug this, but um, or for the most part, if you just follow the context clues and um, read the manufacturer's uh, a little quick start guide, you should be able to know how to put your SIM in. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so SIM's activated, mm -hmm. SIM's inserted, then what? So the last step is setting the APN, which we alluded to a little bit earlier, um, and we have a couple of devices here, and they all um, get the APN in different ways. Okay. Um, so the first device I have here is just a phone, so uh, from my experience, Android phones, Apple phones, and Windows phones um, all have the APN settings uh, entered automatically. And the reason why this happens is that manufacturers have a list of common APNs, um, and the hologram APN is now listed in one of those. So chances are, if you have one of these devices, the APN will be set up automatically. However, um, we have seen a few devices where you have to set it in manually, mm -hmm. um, and that's done through the software on the phone. Okay. Right? Yep. So you just go to settings, um, there's gonna be a cellular section, set the APN, so. Right. When you have the screen and the interface on your device, it mm -hmm. changes things, whereas most of the things we deal with, IoT type stuff, is screenless, right? Exactly. Yeah. So um, kind of on that, uh, the next device we have here is a pet GPS, the famous Mikey. The Mikey, uh, yes. The Mikey, yeah. We've, we've kind of uh, started in a previous video, one uh -huh. of my favorite devices. And this device doesn't have any buttons or any sort of interface. So the way you set the APN is through SMS. Mm. And the reason why this works is that SMS goes over the circuit switch network. Uh -huh. um, and that's basically all electrical contacts. So you don't need to set up an APN. Um, and this is what's used for SMS messaging. Now the APN allows you to access data, but data goes through the packet switch network. 
So using SMS, we can um, set up the APN. And usually, the manual is going to tell you what um, SMS messages you need to send to set up the APN. Uh -huh. um, our APN details are listed um, in the blog that we mentioned. But okay. usually, all you have to do is set the APN, which is hologram. Everything else is empty. Do you need to have a phone number in order to, set, to send an SMS or no? You don't. Actually, that's a good point. You can do this all through the dashboard. So the dashboard has a send message to device section where you can send SMS messages um, and do that there. Uh, although if you prefer, you can purchase a phone number and then use your phone to send SMS messages. Really depends on what you want. Right. So mm -hmm. the phone number would be associated with your SIM card, and then your your some other device is sending a message to that SIM card, basically. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Great. Okay. Uh, okay. What about if you have access to the actual device, like a like a dev board or something? Mm -hmm. So for dev boards, uh, there's basic two, there are basically two ways to do this. Um, the way that I like to encourage is through libraries. So mm -hmm. um, here we have a six four uh, six fab board. Um, for the Arduino, uh -huh. uh, sorry, not the Arduino, the Raspberry Pi, and um, Six Fab have have their own libraries. So in the library, um, there's somewhere if you just do a Control F, look for APN. There's going to be somewhere where you set the APN. Got it. Um, and that's usually where you put hologram. So in code. Got it. Right. Um, the other way is if you have access to the uh, modem, you can actually do it through AT commands um, via serial. Right. Um, but and that's secondary. That's exactly the other stuff doesn't work. Yeah. Usually uh, the libraries are there to make it a little bit more uh, user friendly. So that's why we encourage that. Um, at the end of the day, all of these are levels of abstraction that then lead to AT commands to the modem, mm -hmm. um, but they're there to make life a little bit easier. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Yep. And then the last one is this USB modem. And this USB modem, as uh, a lot of other USB modems have, um, they have their own little piece of software, uh, whether it's like a web page or a little uh, package that's loaded on there that um, loads whenever you plug it in. Mm -hmm. And that usually uh, allows you to configure the device. Right. And in the configuration options, you do have uh, APN. Got it. So it would be like a 192.168 type of mm -hmm. address you navigate yeah. to? Yeah. So okay. uh, depending on the device, um, it could be that, or it could be something that's like loaded onto the USB, Got it. some sort of driver type thing. Got it. Um, but yeah, so just make sure that uh, you read the instructions. Usually it's there, and it'll tell you how to set the APN okay. um, if you need to. Great. Um, what if people have trouble with the APN or, or the SIM card or anything else? Where should, where should they do? So uh, if you're having any sort of problem with a device or the APN, you should definitely contact us through the forum. Mm -hmm. So uh, the hologram forums have a ton of uh, advice on how to set up different devices. Yeah. And there's no point in you struggling to get your device on uh, the network if somebody else has already done it and right. um, has mentioned it on the forums. So that's yeah. a great way to contact us. Right, especially like searching for. Searching is always the best thing to do on a forum. But if you mm -hmm. can't find it, you know, it's always free to ask new questions. And, mm -hmm. and we, we're pretty quick to get back to people. Yep. And I, uh, you're also compiling a list of um, compatible devices. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. That's uh, basically you're just trying to run down and so that you can see if if this has been done before. Um, you know, there will be a list that that's actually published there. We we already have a list of uh, developer hardware, and mm -hmm. so that's things like like the six fab board here or our own boards like the Dash and the Nova. Uh, those are already proven to be on our network. But then as we see more hardware over time, we want it. We have a tracking list on GitHub. We're also starting to do that for commercial hardware like the Mikey, or mm -hmm. if we've seen it before, we want to let people know so it's easier to get that info. Exactly. That's awesome. So yeah, definitely check that out. That's linked in the blog, mm -hmm. um, but we'll also put a little uh, link to that in this video. Mm -hmm. um, so that pretty much covers it. So going over the basic steps, uh, the first thing is just make sure that your hardware is compatible. Um, the next step would be to activate your SIM. After that, you just want to make sure that you enter your SIM in correctly, and that it's making good electrical contact. And the fourth step is just to uh, set up the APN. And that should pretty much be it. Again, pretty straightforward once you know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, the only challenge is that usually um, the, the manufacturers don't tell you exactly what you need to do. So right. that's what this video is for. Awesome. Well, thanks for telling us about this, Mikey. And I'm sure that people will contact us if they have more questions. Sweet. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you guys for watching.